Hey everyone, Sleepy here. Let's talk Christmas lights. Okay, it's after Christmas, but maybe you're watching this in the future. So anyway, if you've been a, uh, a subscriber for the channel for a while, you know I've been working on my Christmas display every year trying to make it better. So it's taken me a while, but I got rid of all the incandescent lights and successfully converted to 100% LED. That was three years ago. Last year, I started getting into addressable. Not all, but most of them. And my first adventure into custom electronics, even the first time really doing any kind of soldering or anything like that. So this year, I figured, let's step up my game. Let's do it better. And go all out. So this year, I am now 99% addressable with still some areas that I just you know, ran out of time and uh, energy to work on for this year. We'll work on it next year. But the theme for next year is going to be integration because I do have some two-wire addressable uh, Christmas lights that I need to reverse engineer so I can integrate them into WLED. So that's going to be a big theme for 2025. I'm going to go get an oscilloscope and go full out and teach myself how to do this because well, if you don't know, I'm a data engineer, not an electrical engineer. So this is all new for me. So one of the things I wanted to improve upon this year was my custom electronics and really trying to get them a little cleaner. Cause you know, you can go buy stuff that uh, like a DigiQuad and stuff like that. That's great stuff. Love it, love it. But part of this is to learn. You know, I'm in my early forties now and I'm never gonna stop learning. My wife thinks I'm crazy, but whatever. So let me show you. So this is uh, actually what I was using last year as the main kind of switch. So all these wires went to relays so I could turn uh, mains power on and off. Because obviously I still use 120 to feed power around the front yard because uh, AC goes a lot further than DC. But as you can see, this could be cleaner. Like I hacked on a Wi-Fi antenna from my old laptop. So, or something like this where I'm basically just, you know, soldering directly onto the pins. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't admit I did that. But anyway, uh, that's kind of the thing. So my ears started burning because I'm thinking about, you know, trying to do custom PC, PCB design and getting it manufactured. And then just literally at the same time back, I think it was October, today's sponsor reached out. JLC PCB. Talk about the coincidence. Okay, so they're not paying me, but they did give me uh, credits to use their manufacturing services, which I like that um, example because I really want to try them out before I put my uh, stamp of approval on them. And uh, spoiler, they got a customer for life, but I'll explain that later in the video. Okay, there's also a link down in the description, which you can get an awesome deal. deal. Go check it out. Because with their help, I made this. Now, yeah, we'll go over the mistakes I made. So, let's zoom in. So, uh, one of the things last year that I made was the first time that I was really uh, constricted on my budget was I needed some uh, power injection cables. So, I kind of just made my own. So, I just 3D printed these boxes and, well, they worked, although they are pretty ugly. Uh, and this was, uh, if you want to call it a PCB, uh, it's kind of a stretch, but uh, this is what I made. You know, it's just a perf board and you know, some connectors with some hot glue on the back. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Fast forward to this year, and uh, the first project I put together for uh, JLC uh, PCB because I'd never used them before and before I'm going to uh, endorse anyone, I wanted to check out their service. So I did a very simple design to replace this with this, which is basically the same thing, uh, but uh, put together and assembled by them. I have to say uh, this was actually a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be. And uh, the quality is spectacular for the fact that I had never even once designed anything 
in any kind of uh, PCB software. I'm not an electrical engineer, so complete learning curve for me. But yeah, it came out great. And um, one of the things I will say, and uh, obviously they're not paying me to say this, but when I put this in, I was a dummy and I had inverted all these connectors. So yeah, I'd have to put the wire from the inside. Yeah, that wasn't gonna work. Um, they caught that. And because the footprint on the PCB wouldn't change, um, they were able to rotate these and put them on properly, which floored me that for a, a nothing order, I think it was like 30 bucks total, that kind of level of customer service was phenomenal. I was incredibly impressed. Um, so this was uh, my project just to uh, test the service and see how it worked and the, you know how it flew, flowed and if there were any problems or anything. I was floored by it. Definitely recommend them. But so that was the first project and you're not really, no one really cares about this one. It was my test. What I really wanted to do was clean up some of the controllers that I was using. So I have a, I had a mix of ESP 8266s and ESP uh, 32s uh, last year. This is one of the older ones that I uh, was using that I'm no longer using. But as you can see, like literally I was just soldering horrible job wires right onto the end of the pins. Uh, actually, here, let me show you some uh, some of the actual main controller that I want to clean up. So this is the main box. Everything running outside is running through this one outlet. Pulls about 300 watts, which is not bad compared to uh, say a Griswold uh, Christmas or something like that, if you know what I'm talking about. So as you can see, uh, this could be better compared to some of the uh, beautiful works of art you'll see on Reddit, which uh, people post and like, this is the first time I've ever done this. Yeah. Bullshit. But yeah. And I'm going to improve on this. But one of the things I want to do is clean that up and also move that box into there, into one unit. Uh, fast forward to this year. Okay, so this is the second project that I did. And um, one thing I'm going to recommend if you jump into doing custom uh, PCB work, don't rush. You know, as you know, Florida had some hurricanes and everything. I got delayed and I kind of rushed to get this done for Christmas. And I made some glorious errors. Now, as far as the manufacturing and everything, phenomenal. No problems there. I screwed up on the design. I put the uh, USB connector on backwards and I'm not about to try to remove that. I don't have a hot plate or anything. Um, and that would change the footprint and I'd have to do wires and stuff. So I looked it alone and I actually manipulated a uh, USB cable to get the plug in. I only need the cable to be able to flash it. So also I screwed up on the buttons and I had rotated them 90 degrees from where they should have been. So that means uh, I couldn't do anything. It just basically stuck in a boot loop. So I had to, uh, I was able to remove both the buttons and uh, put some new ones on in the correct orientation. So that works fine. That took a little bit of a learning curve. But I would love to say that that's the only thing I screwed up on here, but wow, this is what happens when you copy things off the internet. There you go, all my bodge wires. I completely screwed up on uh, setting up these uh, relays. I had an inadvertent wire um, trace underneath that connected both, uh, both pins in addition to the diode. So nothing's ever going to happen. Um, Plus, for some reason, uh, my the way I set up the uh, status LED on the front side um, was preventing it from opening or closing, whatever. Uh, so I had to bypass that too. So yeah, I actually learned a lot. 
Here, let me. Nope. Here's my first attempt at fixing it. Uh, I actually successfully burnt out all the optocouplers. Yeah, don't do that. And here's actually the uh, first attempt. First, first attempt. I didn't even get to the. I did a little bit on the back, but um, where I actually tried removing stuff, components from the board, and also, uh, well, I really screwed this one up. I'll have to fix it eventually. It doesn't. It can't boot because I've uh, actually yanked off some of the capacitors that are needed for the ESP32. But yeah, with that said, don't be afraid to jump into doing this kind of stuff. Uh, I learned a lot during it, and there's actually some other things on here like I didn't know about how uh, some of these uh, voltage regulators dump uh, heat onto a grounding plane, which I don't have. So uh, they actually overheat, so I can't use the 12 volt line, because I made this so it can do uh, 12 or 5 volt because I still have a mix of uh, different uh, products outside. So that's pretty much it. I'm very impressed with how far I've come this year. And next year, you know, I hope you stay tuned because there's gonna be a lot more um, content coming up on this subject and plus the woodworking stuff. Once again, I wanna thank JLC PCB for them collaborating with me on this. Uh, check out the description for a link to them so you can get a really cool deal right now. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If not, stay sleepy, my friends.